Today we are gonna to try to build the world's smallest home video setup in the world's tiniest house. Today we're here in Waco, Texas, and we're in this community of tiny homes. The smallest one available was actually this one over here, and we're trying to prove a point that there's no space that's too small to actually build a workable YouTube setup in. The last video we did was about how to set up a studio in the world's tiniest closet. You guys seem to enjoy that one. We built an entire YouTube studio in a four by five foot space. So today, we're gonna to walk through how to do a similar thing with an actual house. We're here at the house. We actually have not even gone in yet. I wanted to share the first look with you guys. So I'm gonna put in the secret code and take a look. All right, so now that we've kind of explored the house a little bit, we have a first crucial decision that we have to make. Where are we gonna set up the studio? We wanna know where the camera's gonna be, where we're gonna be, and what the background's gonna look like. And so I chose not to use the bathroom for obvious reasons, not to use the bedroom. I was choosing between the dining room and the living room, and I like the living room a lot more because it just has so much more fullness of texture, a lot more going on, a lot more depth, versus the dining room, which just has a lot of flat walls and a lot of flat, and angular shapes involved. So we're gonna use the living room here. If you come over here, what we're working with now is we're trying to figure out where in the space we should set up the camera to be. So one way that we like to think about it is how do we set up a, uh, a shot that's just facing flat against a wall because that feels the most presenterly, it's the most squared off, and it makes it look like it's really intentionally designed. However, in a smaller space, there's other options that we wanted to explore too. If you have a small space like this, you can also think about how can you find ways to, to, to shoot a slanted shot. So from here shooting against this way or from here shooting that way. And what that does is it gives you the opportunity to make more of a longer distance of like a sight line so that you can blur out the background a little bit more than the background being just right up against behind your head. In this case, however, we wanted to also take into account that there's a massive couch here. And if I had the camera shooting this way, for instance, I would need a, a seating area right here for me to sit. But then it's gonna look so awkward sitting right next to the armrest that I didn't wanna do that. So in this case, what we decided on was we're gonna take the couch, put the camera right up, uh, right opposite the couch and have the couch be the background. This right here has already been nicely designed by the owner of this Airbnb, but we're, and we're gonna take advantage of that. So we're gonna move this. This we found out actually is a TV, super cool. It's like a Thing that you can make it go up and down um, and the TV goes like that. and the TV pops up isn't that so cool anyways let's not get distracted let's bring it back down we're gonna take this TV box move it off to the side so we have a little bit of space here for the camera then we're gonna take the camera do some test shots and then throw up the lighting and that's really where the magic of the studio is gonna start taking place so we're gonna cut to that. Let's actually get moving a little bit here. Hey guys, so now I'm on my phone here. This is typically how people would do a YouTube video or something where they just sit in their space and turn on their camera and just start filming. Now, there's just so much stuff wrong with this shot that we're gonna go through in a little bit and show you how we turn this into something that looks a little bit more like one of these things. These are just examples of folks before and afters that we've done in the past over and over and over again. This is all that me and my team do every single day. All right, so let's actually start moving this stuff. So we wanna move this. By the way, this is a great point to point out. Whenever you're getting plants for your studio, get fake plants because real plants look amazing. They feel great until they start to change shape. If they wilt or if a, one of the leaves droops kind of funny, you're gonna have to, to adjust it to keep the same composition of your shot. And that can become quite a hassle. So I always tell people, opt for artificial when you can. I'm gonna move this massive TV thingy. That should be good. We just wanted a clear space here for the camera to go. All right, so this right here, for those of you nerds that are curious, this is the Canon EOS R camera with a Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. You don't have to find the exact camera that I have or that anyone else has. A lot of people ask me, which camera should I get when we're working with them to design their studio? Really think through what are your needs? How big is your space? Are you gonna do any travel filming? Are you gonna be doing action sports? Are you gonna um, be bird watching? 
What are the different types of camera features that you need? Do you need slow motion? Do you need a flip out screen? Do you need all these kind of things? So think through a couple of these major things. Number one, you wanna be able to have a flip out screen so you can see what you're recording. Number two, shoot in 1080. Uh, 4K can be nice, but there are drawbacks. Sometimes the files are just too large to work with and it can actually become a bottleneck in your process. So don't just copy a camera uh, recommendation from somebody, really understand where it comes from. So to show you what this shot is gonna look like, it's gonna be me sitting here on the couch, centered on the couch. I like to go for the masterclass look, always thinking about if I was a, a world-class expert in something and I want this to be like a really nice polished video, how would I wanna design it? So in this case, we're gonna do that. Camera's gonna be right here. It's gonna be kind of a squared off shot, pointed at me, everything centered, really nice and polished and it's gonna be roughly about the height of my chin so that it captures more of my body. So we're gonna do that, turn it on. So this is the shot, this is what it looks like right now. I'm sitting here talking to the camera and I'm actually liking the shot. One thing I can do is I can raise it a little bit higher. And now I have a shot that I actually think is a very good start. It's a little bit overexposed if you guys can see, just the whites are just blown out. And so I'm gonna play with lighting. We're gonna close this window, which you'll see does a lot to change the vibe of it. We're gonna add some lighting, like I just mentioned. We're gonna add some decor, and this is going to quickly transform before your eyes. All right, so the next ingredient we wanna play with is lighting. Lighting is, I would tell most of my clients that lighting is the most ignored or underappreciated aspect of making your space look amazing. Everyone knows cameras. Everyone knows, oh, I can see the background on camera. That's probably a thing too. Most people underestimate lighting for the reason that lighting we kind of take for granted, right? We just have the sun, we have lights. We turn on the lights so you can kind of better see this part of the process. But when I turn off these lights in a little bit, you're gonna see such a big difference with the lighting. So the main light that we wanna play with, the main or the primary light is the key light. That's why it's called the key light, it's the main light. So this is a light source that's designed to, sh to shed a soft glow of light across your face, but um, you don't actually have to get the exact one that I have. This is just part of my regular travel kit when I go to, to shoot in different places, but there's a lot of different lighting you can, you can play with. You just wanna have a large diffuse surface area so that this can really shed a lot of light on you. So this is called a soft box and it softens the light a little bit. We're gonna take that and we're gonna put it on top of the actual light source itself. This is a massive LED thing. And I just screw it on. And it has a little skirt that I pull around it. So, grabbing this light stand, just a regular old light stand, but typically for larger things like that, you wanna find a light stand that's gonna be sturdy enough so it doesn't fall over onto you. So, I'm gonna take the light, throw it on top of here, and crank it down. When you're setting up a light, you also wanna make sure for safety reasons, always to have the, the light stand supporting the weight. So if it's very front heavy, make sure to have one of the legs going in that direction to prevent it from tipping over. So I'm gonna set the light here as a starting point. And then we can plug it in. You can see what it looks like. So it's a little bit short, so let's raise it a little bit. All right, that is very large in the space right now, but it's not visible on camera, which is good. So we can keep it there as is. Here we go. Now we got lighting. So if you can see, I'm gonna turn off the light. We got a little bit of lighting here. So we brightened that up a little bit. And this is what that looks like here on camera. So inside the camera, I'm gonna change my settings so that it's a little darker. And immediately the look has already changed. So we went from this to this. And we haven't even dialed in all the settings yet, but you can see how big of a difference this has already made. And uh, the thing that we wanna do is we wanna have a nice soft glow coming from this side of our face all the way to the others. If you think about your face like a box, like a cube, you want each of your sides of your head to be lit differently. So when I'm working with my, my key light, I wanna have it come from one side of my face, kind of start to fall all the way to the other cheekbone. So these two sides of my face, the front and the side, should be covered by that key light. 
We're gonna, in a second, have something for the top of my head and also from the other side. So that way we really give a lot of dimensionality to my face and not just have the deer in the headlights, flat ring light look that everyone um, kind of somehow uh, is, is so popular on the internet right now just because people just assume a ring light is a video light and that's what they should be using. So that's the first light and we're gonna adjust the camera settings a bit more in a moment, but let's add in some of the other lights. So the next light that we wanna set up is something to hit me from the opposite side. We have the key light here. We want something that's gonna fill in the opposite side of my face. So key lights coming from the, the my right side of the face. We want something coming from the left side. And now this is where you can get creative with lighting. Lighting, I always tell people, is built on principles rather than based on actual hard and fast rules. So there's a very common setup called the three-point lighting setup, and you have something behind you up top and on something off to the side too as a fill. We're gonna try to actually combine some of these here. And so what I've got is I've got a relatively tall light stand, actually just regular normal size light stand. I'm gonna extend it far above my head and use what one of these spotlights. This right here is a Godox S30 light. Again, it doesn't have to be these exact pieces of equipment that I have, but make sure you just understand the features that you're looking for. And here, this is gonna be a spotlight that I'm gonna shine onto me, and hopefully to be able to cast an interesting silhouette, kind of a glow, what we call a rim light around the other side of me. So let's do that right now. Let's set up this light stand. All right, so now that I've turned that on, you can see there's a little bit of a glow around me now. So now that we have multiple lights in the shot, I want to start playing with the relative balances of the different ways in which we can control the amount of light coming onto the video. Number one is the, the key light. Number two is that side light that we just put up, but also the, the ISO in the camera. So I'm gonna do that right now here. Actually, instead of dimming the light, I'm gonna throw on a different adapter here on my camera. So this right here is a very interesting adapter. This is called an ND filter adapter. And an ND filter is a neutral density filter, which acts like sunglasses for your lens. So if you look through that, I can turn this darker, I can turn it lighter, and I'm gonna put this onto my camera lens right here so that you can see it gets lighter and darker as I adjust that here. So this is so that I can keep my aperture open without removing, uh, without having to uh, dim my lights. So now this is what we're playing with. It's a little bit dimmer, so I can brighten up the shot a little bit by adding more light here and probably raising that up a little bit. So let's get this out of the shot and make this a little bit brighter. Let's go to 25%. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I still want to add a light over the top of my head to fill in this area. So what we need to do is add that other light in as well. So let's do that. And I'm gonna use my fishing pole holder, a grip head connected to a fishing pole holder, i.e. a boom pole holder. So this is maybe a little bit overkill for some people, but I really just wanna make this look good. So we're gonna go all the way here. I'm gonna get it just out of the frame. All right, that's looking good. And we got the nice uh, glow off the side. One thing that's cool is that glow is starting to shine across the wall and giving us a very interesting glow on the wall. I kind of like that. So let's keep playing with it. So the problem we're trying to solve is the top of me is, is very well lit. My skin is a little bit brighter and so it also helps to brighten me up a little bit. Um, but down here it's a little bit darker. And so in my situation, I wanna increase the brightness on the bottom half of me. So I could do that by showing, uh, shedding some extra light on here, or I can grab a reflector. And this reflector will allow me to bounce some of the light coming from the top onto the bottom of me. Just like that. You guys see the difference? And I can increase the brightness of this too to add a little bit more brightness to the top of my head. And now there's one more thing. I wanna start playing with the background a little bit too. I'm gonna to turn this off just to save batteries on this till we come back to this. But lighting is in a very good spot already. To get the background looking nice, there's a couple of things I wanna play with. Adding a practical light, which is a light that adds some warmth to the shot, as well as adding some greenery, some plants and stuff like that. Ta-da! Nice, it adds some really cool lighting to the back. 
it's a little tilted, so I'm gonna move it away from the wall. So there we go, that's the, uh, that's the side light over there. And because there's not a lot of height to this plant, I wanna find something to put it on top of. Sometimes you gotta use what you got. This is a little cookie jar. So we threw something in there. It's not the most beautiful looking plant, but it's what we had. And it starts to give a little bit more organic feel to the space. So it's not all just rigid stuff. And speaking of that, we can also adjust these pillows to make it feel more like a, like a space to sit in and hang out in rather than something that's just for display. I'm gonna turn this light back on so we can see what it looks like. And I am really liking this. This is so cool. Oh my God. This is what I love about building studios. Every time you do it, you don't know what you're gonna get. And then when it's done, it just looks so pleasing to the eye. I'm so excited. I would say this is actually very good. So looking back from where we started today to where we ended up now, look at the drastic difference and let this be an encouragement to you that it's possible to build a world-class looking studio from even the smallest of spaces. You just have to get creative and you have to understand the principles of what you're trying to accomplish. And speaking of principles, I've also put together a full ultimate studio setup crash course where I'll email you a video about how to set up your studio and go through these fundamental principles that I've been talking about over the course of, I think, seven-ish days. We take our clients and students through these exact principles, put some of our best stuff in there. The link down below to, to, to get that is just down below. If you are someone who doesn't have a lot of time and does not want to do this on your own, we work with a lot of folks to do this for them, to be their professional design team, to assign them the exact gear based on their room size and layout, their budget needs, their style, everything fully, fully custom for them. If you're interested in that and you want to work together, a link to apply to do that is down below too. And if you haven't seen the Tiny Closet Studio video yet, I highly recommend watching that. That was a lot of fun to create. And YouTube thinks that you should watch this other video right here. So click and I will see you in a couple seconds. Love you guys, bye.